in this video, I am going to be going over all of the Dungeonborn 15th of August patch notes, and this is a pretty big one. We have a new Druid ability that can heal yourself or your allies over time, as well as pretty huge changes to the Rogue and the Fighter. So, let's get into it. New content, added exceptional quality equipment, a new tier between epic and legendary. Players can obtain exceptional gear in dungeons and claw those trials. Heirlooms can now be upgraded to this tier too. So this is pretty cool, there's just a brand new quality of equipment which is very very nice because I think you find purple quite commonly in the higher end games but you really don't find gold that much at all so hopefully now we've got something new and shiny and fancy to look forward to in the dungeons. This brand, the brand new PvP mode called Those Trials officially kicks off on August 16th, which is tomorrow at the time this video is going to go live. Players who earn the flawless title will win legendary gear and an exclusive kill effect. Compete against top players from around the world and show off your skills. We've also added new Steam achievements related to Clotho's Trials. The nature-themed constellation event is now live. Druids have gained a new e-skill, Regrowth, offering fresh tactical options for teams. Don't miss out on this limited time event and grab an exclusive cosmetic reward. The shop now features four new skeletal series weapon skins and three sets of skeletal armor skins. Become the Chosen of Terror and play a symphony of blood and horror for your enemies. Added a player statistics tab. After the update, you can view them in the in inventory interface. Please note that the Vengeful Monarch kill count starts. will start counting from zero. Okay, so, class, balance. Rogue. Dev comment. We want rogues to be an elusive assassin, but their current pick and escape rates are way too high, especially in solo play. We've observed increasingly severe cases of combat avoidance and teaming, with gold farming rogues seriously impacting the experience of regular players. With this update, we want rogues who avoid combat to pay a higher price and give other classes more chances to catch them. So this is very fair, rogues really do run pretty rampant in any normal solo game, and even in teams there are a good few of them as well, and they're just super annoying to play against really. And if they're a type of rogue that isn't fighting, then you'll go past rooms that are just fully looted already, even very early into the game, because a rogue has obviously just been by and looted the whole area. So all of these changes are kind of addressed to, to fix one or two of those things. Any damage effect in the game, including the poison circle, will now break stealth. So if you poison someone, you're not going to be in stealth anymore after you've poisoned them, so I think that's a pretty good change. Stealthed targets are now easier to detect, becoming visible at 15 meters. So I would imagine they're just going to be a little bit more shimmery, a little bit more visible when they're closer to you. Reduce the movement speed bonus from dexterity. The all interaction speed affix no longer affects portal activation, and the maximum bonus for all interaction speed is now capped at 50%. Increase the cooldown of the E skill's swift concealment by 5 seconds, and vanish by 10 seconds. So they both have longer cooldowns. Change the cooldown mechanism of swift concealment to start the cooldown when stealth ends or breaks. This effectively increases the cooldown again, so it's going to have an even longer cooldown on it. The Dexterity passive Evaporate now has a 15 second cooldown, so this means that if you kill an enemy, you won't enter stealth if you've killed an enemy within the last 15 seconds. So in PvE, you're not going to be able to chain this together very well. Rogues were super, super good at like just clearing out entire rooms very quickly, and now that is not going to be a thing anymore because it's going to have a 15 second cooldown. So they'll still be, you know, okay at clearing rooms before they were super, 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 super good at it. They could do it in seconds and now they're just not going to be able to do that as quickly at all. Fix an issue where if the stealth skill was on cooldown and stealth was triggered again through the evaporate passive, the E skills cooldown would be extended. So this is no longer a thing. Fix an issue where the strength passive stealth break venom would not trigger if stealth lasted too long. And then we have a dev comment. We will continue to monitor the data changes brought by this update to quickly and effectively restore the expected game experience for solo players who actively engage in combat. We've made the following adjustments to the matchmaking strategy. 
If there are too many players of the same class queuing for a map simultaneously, players may experience slightly longer queue time. So I think um, they don't want too many classes to be in one game, which is fair. For the fighter, as countermeasures against fighters have gradually improved, their ability to break through enemy lines has diminished in the current meta. This update provides some assistance to fighter players aiming to make the more effective frontline breakers. The effect of strength passive fired up has been changed to E skills can now store two charges. So now you're either going to have two uh, charge or two inspires, which is going to be pretty powerful. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna be, like, pretty powerful having that on. It's, like, a very, very significant buff to the fighter. There's only two things here. This is one of them. Um, and the other one is fighters now gradually increase their movement speed during Whirlwind by default, which used to be a passive, but now it's not a passive anymore. You just automatically get it. Um, so there are only two changes here, but they're both pretty significant changes, and I think this definitely might make the fighter, um, a, a, like, a very solid pick now. Having two charges can be pretty strong for sure, so we'll have to see how this plays out in actual games. For the Druid, Dev Common. In this update, Druids have gained a new E skill, becoming the second class in Dungeonborn with healing abilities. Unlike Priests, the Druids focus more on healing over time effects. They can provide stronger sustain for the team while leveraging their class mobility, offering more team comp options. New E skill Regrowth applies heal over time to an allied target, continuously restoring life over 30 seconds. After activating the will pass of Seed Pods, the interval between two casts of the E skill Force of Nature has been reduced from 5 seconds to 1 second, and Druidrians can now critically strike enemies. So they do have a new ability, but it does replace your Treant, your Force of Nature ability. So I'm not too sure how many people are going to want to put this on, because the Treant is definitely extremely powerful and extremely annoying to play against. And before, they didn't even have critical strikes, which now they do. So there is some really, really huge damage potential there. But like this says, if you're doing the correct team compositions with, you know, someone you're like trio stacking with, then the healing over time ability probably can be quite powerful. For the Pyromancer, the second stage of the Q skill Pyroblast can now be detected while invisible, when affected by Rogue's Shadow Veil skill. Quiromancer, the duration of the E skill Frost Barrier has been reduced from 8 to 5 seconds, and the skill's healing effect has been reduced by 50%. So this is just like a giant nerf to the Cryomancer's Frost Barrier, which I think is fair because it was very powerful. When using Shadow Damage One-Handed Swords, the melee DPS of Sword and Orb was somewhat overtuned. Additionally, the Sword and Orb's close range charge heavy attack combined fast shield breaking, slowing, and burst damage, making it difficult for melee characters to gain a consistent advantage after closing in on Cryos. To address this, we've made the following adjustments. The damage multiplier for Sword and Orb's Light Attack has been adjusted from 0 0.60.61 to 0 0.40.40.6. The additional Cold Elemental Damage Multiplier for Sword and Orb's Enchantment has been adjusted from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. These two changes shift more damage to Orb Enchantments, reducing the difference between Elemental and Physical Swords, and decreasing the sustained melee damage output of Shadow Swords. The damage multiplier for Sword and Orb's Heavy Attacks has been reduced from 0 0.75 to 0 0.5, and the damage multiplier for its projectiles Ice Slash has been reduced from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. So just a lot of changes to the sword there. About Priests, Dev Comment. Over the past week, Priests' pick and extraction rates in high-end games has been steadily rising, see the data below, leading to a delay in our planned buffs. We want to continue monitoring the data after the nerf to life on hit to ensure we make the right decisions. So after life on hit uh, nerfs, apparently Priests have been having a higher pick rate. I find this very surprising because I still believe that priests suck quite a lot, um, but I guess they're just going to monitor the data. I'd be very, very surprised if they didn't actually roll out the changes to the priest, but um, it might happen, but I, I think a, a rework to the priest is, is still going to happen, and that's still going to be occurring at some point uh, relatively soon, especially now that the druid has heals as well. Um, I think this is going to render the priest like almost entirely useless if like there's a second class that can also just heal now um, and healing over time can actually be quite beneficial in a lot of ways compared to the priests like just automatic heal well like burst heal let's say um, so yeah I, I think that 
the priest is probably still going to get the rework or just the buffs that it was supposed to get, but maybe just like in a couple weeks or something. Item balance. Mimic potion optimization. Tired of other players easily recognizing you as a fake chest, you can now transform into various chest types and randomly generate open or closed states and loot beam effects to surprise or jump scare your opponent. So you can like have, the you can theoretically have like a purple loot beam inside an open chest which someone might come and grab and then you can surprise them which is going to be quite exciting resurrection stone mechanic each shrine can only spawn one resurrection stone per game and the quality has been changed to epic added an effect indicator for the target point of the trajectory when throwing thunderclap flasks and incendiary flasks making it easier to aim and we also have an incendiary flask rework now in addition to the burning effect, the flask will also apply a Grievous Wounds effect, reducing healing from all sources by 50%, such as Life on Hit, Frostbite Curse, and the new Regrowth skill. Standing in the Flames now deals 5 damage every 0.15 seconds, and after leaving the Flames, the Burning and Grievous Wounds effect will persist for 8 seconds, dealing 5 damage every 0.5 seconds. So overall, I'd say this probably just makes the flasks, the incendiary flasks, much better than they used to be, which is quite nice. There are other changes here. These are all pretty random changes. Um, they don't really impact too much, so you can go ahead and read this, these if you want to. I don't think that I'm going to. It's really just optimization and like visual effects stuff. And then there's also some bug fixes here, which you can pause and read. I guess I'll put them here. There's some bug fixes, which you can pause and read if you want to as well. Um, but they're really just going to be bug fixes, so I don't think I'm going to be going through it. And we do have some class balance insights. Uh, this is from August 10th to August 11th. Um, so a little bit before this update was put out, which makes sense. And we see the pick rates and then their corresponding extraction rate. All of the extraction rates are above 40%, which is like pretty good. And none of them are. There's one above 50%, which is the rogue. And everything else was below 50%, which is, which is like pretty good. It suggests that... It's fairly balanced, and this is also only level 20 characters, um, and it's based on data from over 1 million instances, so there's a lot of uh, data here to pick from. So this just goes to show that rogues were like significantly stronger than all of the other classes, or they had a significantly higher extraction rate than all of the other classes, and the lowest extraction rate is actually the Pyromancer, which is a little bit surprising because they're quite a good class, I feel like, um, but also their pick rate is pretty low. Rogue also had like the highest pick rate by a very good amount and Death Knight is also up there. There weren't actually any changes to Death Knight um, just yet but the life on hit was nerfed so maybe that's still kicking in. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of data there. And then this is in trios. I'm not going to look at that. I'll quickly show it on the screen if you want to look at it. This is classic mode trios and Clozo Castle. Uh, pick rates and extraction rates for that. A um, little bit of anti-cheat stuff, they've like banned a couple more people and they're upgrading their anti-cheat. And we also have the Moon Gift Celebration event has started, commemorating the incredible first month since Dungeonborn's launch. We have lots of new events, switch drops and free rewards coming your way. Start by claiming your free DLC now and stay in tune for the announcements coming soon. So if you hop on to the official Discord page and you click this button, this is just a free DLC that you can download. And we also have a hotfix, which went out a little bit later on. Um, and we have some bug fixes. Fix an issue that would lock... Okay, well, there's just, there's just more bug fixes here. And it was a hotfix, so you can go ahead and read those if you want. I'm not going to go through them. Um, so yeah, the main stuff in this was the rogue got some pretty significant nerfs. I don't think this is going to get played nearly as frequently as it was before, but I think it's still going to be a very okay flask, I mean class, in the right hands. And um, we do also have a new druid ability. It does replace the treant though, so I think that's still going to get used a lot, but I'd say this ability might get used a little bit in teams and stuff like that. It does heal for like a very decent amount, so we'll have to wait and see. The fighter, I think, is going to be a lot stronger now. Having the two E-charges is going to be very, very, very powerful, I think. Um, and then the Cryomancer also got nerfed quite a lot, so I think they're going to be a little bit easier to take out now than they would have used to have been. And um, yeah, that is pretty much it. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Farewell. well.